I don't usually go to thrift stores. But when I noticed this new one had popped up on the same road I used to get to work every day, I decided it would be cool to give it a quick glance on the way back. There's not much in this sleepy little town. I've lived here all my life and I've only seen business leave, so to see one finally pop up, even if it is just a used goods vendor, I thought I'd do my part and see if I could give the mom and pop shop some business. Pulling into the lot around 9.40pm after loading my passenger seat with a hefty dose of delicious organ rotting fast food, I noticed the sign hanging over the door read, Thrift. Simple, but poignant, I thought. Well, heading inside, I was not surprised to find it matched the same simplicity as the brand. It was a single room the size of maybe a small bedroom, with about three tables set up on the left side of the room, side by side in makeshift mini aisles, and a little table with what looked like a 90-year-old cash register sat just on top. For a second, I almost thought it was part of the inventory, but then I noticed the eager young man standing behind the register, name tag pinned on his collared brown shirt sleeve. He smiled at me immediately. I nodded politely and headed over to the tables on the left-hand side. A lot of the usual stuff you'd imagine, which is to say about anything you could imagine. A bunch of knickknacks, old picture frames, old mugs, and hordes of old crusty dolls. Nothing I was willing to spend the time disinfecting to take home. But then I noticed this old computer shell sitting a table down. It turned out to be a Windows XP build on an old Dell, and taking a look under the hood, it was much more than just a shell. The video card was still there along with what looked like a 2 gigabyte stick of RAM and, my god, I was in disbelief to see it still held a hard drive. By the layers of grime caked on, I wasn't sure it still boot up, but I was sure it was the original. After bartering with the poor kid, I was able to get him down to about 10 bucks. I asked him if he knew any history behind the machine. But he clearly gave the same answer to any similar questions from any similar fellow. It's a donation, they come from all over. I nodded and headed out the door. By the time I was home, my fast food was thoroughly gone, which was great because that meant I had nothing to deal with before diving into my new mystery machine. It came with an old power cord, but... That was about it. I was pretty sure my mouse and keyboard would work with it, but then I realized the TV I was using for my monitor wasn't going to be compatible. I was pretty upset for about 20 seconds, before I thought to check some of the old boxes in the attic. I know I sold that old computer I had when I was a kid ages ago, but I wasn't sure I'd been able to get rid of the old monitor. Sure enough, it was there. An old 10 by 10 inch monitor, or something like that. Bulky as a boulder, but it had the right ports, so we were good. Hitting that power button, I was half expecting the old system to not even act like it was attempting to boot, but sure enough that white power light clicked on, and then the computer monitor crackled itself to life with that old static I hadn't experienced in years. Made me a little nervous, to be honest. Kind of wondered if this setup was a fire hazard. But then I got to the Windows loading screen, which lingered for a couple of minutes, flipping to black and then opening to a login screen. The computer was apparently owned by someone named Roslyn, given the profile name, which, to my disappointment, was password locked. Oh, jeez, I thought, slumping down into my desk chair. I thought for sure this was the end of the road. I really didn't know anything about hacking or whatever you'd call getting through a password screen, but almost out of instinct, I felt my arms reach out and type the word password. 
I hit enter, the little box collapsed into a loading world, and then the screen faded out, back out to black. Ten seconds later, the screen popped to life on a desktop. To say I was excited would be an understatement, alright? On top of the cool find, I hadn't been exposed to an XP computer in ages. The first thing I did was pop open the start menu and find that old pinball game. My god was that thing the best. I can't believe they didn't port it over or something like it to future operating systems. Because I sunk hours of my childhood into that game. Well, I played that for a good 20 minutes before I decided it would be a good idea to start exploring the hard drive. Who knew where this thing came from? Who knew what could be on it? I wasn't expecting to find lost treasure or anything, but I figured there could be something on here interesting enough to elicit a chuckle, uh, maybe a story for the water cooler, at least. Well, when I exited the window, and just took a look at the desktop for a second to see what files were there first, I realized there were none. There was the trash can and uh, Internet Explorer. The desktop wallpaper was also, oddly, just a kind of deep navy blue color, no texture or anything of any kind, and definitely not beautiful pixelated rolling hills under the summer sun. I went to my documents. Nothing. Checked my music, and the same. No pictures, no downloads. When I went straight to the program files folder, there appeared to be nothing installed on here that wouldn't have been included with the stock firmware. My excitement was now close to gone. This must have been owned by some grandma named Rosalind, who didn't know how to use her computer any more than she knew how to create a strong password. But the more I thought about it, the more strange it seemed just how broken down the computer was. It wasn't that this looked like a fresh operating system install. This looked like someone had deliberately removed all possible desktop shortcuts even switching out the desktop background for a dull, dark color. That didn't seem like something a grandma would care to do. I kept clicking around before finally opening the My Videos folder. My heart jumped as I saw a file name. My god, there is something here, I thought while giggling to myself. I almost couldn't believe it. Looking at the clock, it told me the time was now half past midnight. 12.32 to be exact. Hmm. My alarm clock was set to scream me awake in about five hours. But I made the executive decision to say, screw it, and followed my gut to stay on the computer at least a little while longer. Long enough to check out this file, at least. It was a .mp4 file, and the title was Buttermilk. There was a thumbnail displayed, but it just looked like a solid black square. I right-clicked to check out the properties of the video. It was a whopping 104 megabytes, which seemed a little steep for a Windows XP to me. Although it's been so long, I'm not really sure. It was about 9 minutes long at 360p resolution. Did that make sense for a 104 megabyte file? I'm kind of just asking into the void because I'm not sure and I'm still not sure. The file creation date was January 1st, 2000. I double clicked the file and that old Windows Media Player came to life. After about 20 seconds of loading time, of course. A black screen. I double-checked that the playhead was moving down the timeline, and it indeed was. It was playing. 30 seconds in, still pure black. But at around the one minute mark, 
the screen suddenly cut to a shot of a man in a black suit with combed back hair, not unlike what you'd see depicted on businessmen in old 50s movies, sitting at a desk, leaning kind of off to the side reading a newspaper. The footage looked as though it had been recorded on an old VHS and then ported to digital, giving it a grain, wobble, and degradation impossible for a native video file. The nameplate on the edge of his desk read, Mr. Dean, Executive Director of Internal Procedures. That title sounded a bit weird to me. Certainly never heard of that before. But within a few seconds, the man glanced over to the camera and folded the newspaper, setting it to the side of his desk. Oh, you've arrived. Well, I sure am happy to welcome you to the Buttermilk Incorporated family. You know, we currently employ over 20,000 employees here at the factory, but a group numbered less than the fingers on one of your hands will ever see this film. No more will even know of its existence. If you're here and you're watching, it's because you've proven your responsibility and strength as a trusted leader in this company. And it's now time for you to receive your keys to the kingdom. I paused the video. Now, I was very excited about my find. I grabbed a quick glass of water in the kitchen and swung right back around to the computer. I leaned back in my chair and hit play. The man stood up from the chair, walked around, and sat atop his desk, half leaning, half sitting, trying to look as casual as possible, one hand on one knee, while he gesticulated with the other. Now, there's little point of me going over the pledges you've made, the contracts you've signed, or the whole order of classification here. I'm confident that if this document has been made available to you, you've already taken your fair share of grilling, and I congratulate you. As a member of the Buttermilk family, it's important that our exclusive formula be kept under the tightest of lock and key. For much of this company's history, the only folks to hold this jewel were the very founders and their children. I, Mr. Dean, was the first exception when I was promoted to head of the company 15 years ago. And now, it's been made clear to me by those even higher up that it's time to spread the love. What you will witness today is important for you to remember. Pay close attention, my child. You must. You will only be given this information once, and then you must begin the next stage of the work. If you miss the pertinent information within the next portion of the film, making you unable to proceed with your duties, then that will be your folly to bear. But in that case, it'll matter very little, as you won't even exist. Pay attention, and only power awaits. At that, the screen faded to black. When it came back in, a big industrial vat took up virtually the entire screen. It looked to be made of stainless steel, a shiny silver and empty. The camera pointed straight down into the empty center. Then a voice came on. A voice not too dissimilar from Mr. Dean's. The first step is to add your whole fat milk. A hose, like a green garden hose, was then flopped into view into the vat and began spitting out white liquid. Silence hung in the background for the next two minutes as the vat slowly filled. Then something like the sound of a water faucet being cranked off though it was overly loud and crackly, like it wasn't actually a part of the recording, but was added there in post. What the reason for that would be, I couldn't guess. 
The voice then came back on. Mmm, does that cream look good? Now, this is where our company really shines. The screen faded out to black, hung for a second, and then faded back in to show something that looked like a large furnace. There was this big cast iron door with flames visible from the other side of the window into the scorching chamber. The voice then came back on. The next step is to make sure your subject has finished consumption of the A loud beeping sound, like a television sensor tone, screeched across my eardrums. It lasted just a moment before the voice went on. When your subject is done, place it into the chamber. On screen, a man wearing a matching black glove and long sleeve shirt grabbed the furnace's handle and pulled it open. He was only visible from the chest down. Flames roared inside the furnace, though I couldn't tell on what fuel. Maybe the flames were too bright for the camera to pick up. But then something came into view. There was this somewhat long, uh, shadowy black mass that was kind of slowly wheeled in. Or at least I assume it was. I didn't see a, a gurney or anything with wheels, but I wouldn't have been able to see that anyway. It just smoothly and slowly slipped into frame. And then someone was lifting this thing off of whatever was holding it. It looked like one black mass trying to move another black mass, but something became clear to me the longer I watched this go on. The black mass this guy was trying to throw into the furnace was about the same size as the guy. And also, at a moment when the flames shined a reflection across the mass, it was clearly made of black tarp plastic, and I swear I saw a long zipper. And I swear I saw the shape of two shoulders. Once my mind connected the dots, it was impossible to not see. Whatever lay inside that large plastic bag, it sure was shaped like a human cadaver. The animate man soon had the body bag sat up on the edge of whatever it was wheeled in on, and the man was working on the zipper. Soon, I could see something flopping out of the giant black bag, and in a single motion the man flung what I prayed was somehow not a body into the flames of the furnace. I was frozen in place in my chair. The screen faded to black. Fifteen seconds of silence passed. Then fading in from the darkness. We see that same vat of milk from before, the garden hose now absent. The voice joined once again. Now that the conversion has taken place, all that's left is to mix it straight into mother's milk. As he spoke, this grayish yellow powder seemed to fall from above the camera's point of view, falling and dissolving into the vat of milk. The liquid soon turned a dull yellow color. It looked, it looked quite rotten to me. An immediate cut took place, a cut to black, and then to the title card. White text on black, reading END in all caps. Five seconds later, the video was over. I 
didn't feel like exploring anymore. After looking over the properties of the video once again for any details I might have missed, which I didn't miss any, unfortunately, I powered off the system. I sat there in the darkness of my living room for a while, just staring at the old piece of hardware I'd lugged into my house just hours earlier. My god, what had I gotten myself into? I left my boss a voicemail saying I'd come down with something, and the next morning I tried looking into that buttermilk company online, but couldn't find anything. And I mean nothing. I expected to find at least some reference to the business, given that it was a business, but apparently not. I even went and tried checking some of those online city records websites, but nothing. Eventually, I decided to hit the local library. Now, again, I live in a small town and therefore the library isn't really anything to write home about. A small two-story building may be the equivalent of a four-bedroom house. Not super expansive, but it had some old town records I figured were my only real hope of getting any info on the topic. When I visited, there was hardly anyone there. Just the librarian, who also acted as the front desk man, and just a couple of old-timers reading in some of the chairs. I asked the librarian where to find the old newspapers and records, and he said he'd have to get them from the back and asked me what I was looking for. I told him I was looking for anything on a business called Buttermilk Incorporated that might have been somewhere around here at some point. His eyebrows immediately scrunched. No, sir, I've never heard of that business in my life. And this is a local business, or at least a local factory? Uh, well, I think so, I said. I don't really know for sure, but I've heard that it was around here. I lied. I didn't really know for sure it was from around here, but given a corporate training file was stored on an old PC I found at a thrift shop about three miles away, I was willing to guess the odds were high. Suddenly, a man walked up to the counter I hadn't noticed in the library yet. Hey, did you mention the buttermilk factory? He asked. This was a middle-aged looking guy. I told him I had. He seemed surprised, but tickled. Oh, brother, I hadn't heard someone mention that place in ages. Back when I was working at that old gas station down by the tracks, I would drive by that factory every day. They always had these big smokestacks blowing out clouds of smoke every day. In fact, I used to joke with my son when he was little as we'd drive by, I'd tell him it was the cloud factory, and he'd believe it. <laughs> and it really did kind of look like a cloud factory, given the sheer amount of smoke it let off. But ever since it closed down about 20 years back, I barely even heard a word about it. Pretty sure the factory was demolished because I haven't seen it driving by there in forever. Nothing but weeds and trees. I was absorbed in the guy's words, as this was exactly what I'd been looking for for days. But then the librarian cut in from behind me. I'm sorry, sir, but you must be mistaken. I've lived in this town for the past 50 years, the librarian for the last 30, and I've never in my entire life, not once, heard no talk about no buttermilk factory. It simply ain't on the books, I'm afraid. He spat, almost like he was offended by the man's story. The middle-aged guy looked a little confused. Uh, well, listen, I mean no disrespect, but I know what I saw, and I definitely know what I saw every day for about ten years on my drive to work. Even my son still remembers the cloud factory. The old librarian rolled his eyes and muttered under his breath, Oh yes, I'm sure. He then leaned in close to me so the guy wouldn't hear. 
Some people just want to believe anything, he whispered. If you need me to look for anything serious, you just let me know. He then patted me on the shoulder and walked back behind the counter, into the back, out of view. I asked the man who drove past the buttermilk factory in the past for directions, and I punched the address into my phone. It took me down this little country road to this patch of woods that seemed to go on in all directions for miles. Definitely no sign of a factory. Not by looking from the road. I got out of my car and waded into the forest a little. I didn't go far as I didn't want to get lost, but before I turned around, I noticed something on the ground, almost under my foot, beneath the dead forest leaves. Picking it up, I could see it was a black leather glove. I looked around for anything else out of the ordinary, but nothing caught my eye. I shoved the glove into my pocket and made it back to the car. I want to go back to the forest, but I won't have time to really give it a good exploration for another week or two. This post has been a record of my experience so far. Until I can update, I'm open to anyone's experience or knowledge of this buttermilk place. So please let me know if you know anything. And especially let me know if you've seen anything like this. Something about all of this feels very wrong. I need to get to the bottom of it. I just know I won't feel safe in this town until I do. You've just listened to buttermilk.mp4 on Clancy Pasta. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your listenership, your viewership so, so much. Uh, tonight's story was written by me again. I've, I guess I've just been doing that lately. I've been writing pretty much all of these stories on here. And I was definitely trying to get in the mind of kind of a, some of the classic tales. And, uh capture some of that energy and uh, I think it works on its own but I definitely have uh, some thoughts in expanding uh, this story going forward huge thanks as always to all of my supporters on Patreon and YouTube members um, the $2 up supporters will be flashing across the screen right now let me know what you thought of this story narration and video in the comments below all right, I, uh, I guess I need to go uh, start packing for my rocket ship to the moon now. I hope you all have a great night, and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers. <laughs>